The town of Weston got hit hard by the rain that fell starting Sunday, July 9th, with several roads washed out and some bridges compromised. But by Wednesday, July 10th, residents were hard at work beginning the cleanup, and one group gathered over the Weston Playhouse, which only a few weeks before had begun its 87th season and was in the middle of staging the Buddy Holly story, a musical. Groups of people formed up to help get the furniture and other items out of the theater's flooded basement. You bet. I'll give you credit. Give me money like you're down at BBA and I'm a happy boy. We talked with the Playhouse's executive artistic director, Susanna Gellert, who described where things stood at that point. We've got a lot of community members and um, a lot of our, our whole team is here. In fact, we had some people who had other things that they were maybe supposed to do today and they said, no, 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 we all want to take care of the building we love. So how bad is the damage inside? Uh, it's worse than Irene. Um, so after Irene, the uh, theater, the community association that owns the building, marked the high water mark on Irene in brass plaques. And the second water rise on Monday was two feet above that. Uh, during Irene, the audience wasn't at all affected, and we got up to the third row with water damage in the building. What's so we've got plan? this, yeah, we've got this big cleaning crew here today, and that will get us to our first step, which will allow remediation specialists to come in and start the drying process. The downstairs, it's going to be quite quite a while. We had been hopeful that the auditorium and the stage would be useful again uh, soon. We were hoping Saturday. I did just hear that the Vermont State Fire Marshal or Fire Department, I'm not exactly sure which office, uh, is yellow tagging all of the buildings in downtown Weston and not allowing them to be used until they sign off. And we don't know how long that's going to take. So we could be in for a real, a real wait here. One of the folks helping out was Chris Morrow the former owner of the Northshire Bookstore. So our road on Lawrence Hill Road was cut off on both ends, um, and downtown Weston was full of water, and uh, as, as you've seen in pictures and the videos, it's just uh, total chaos. But uh, the community's gathering together and putting things back together. You know, today is Playhouse Day, as you know, and uh, step by step, we'll rebuild. Well, the, the marketplace here is next to the firehouse. You know, that area is really the worst in town, uh, the firehouse marketplace and a couple of houses along there and, and some businesses have storage areas in there and that was all completely trashed. So it'll be many weeks, if not months, before that stuff back up and running. We also had a chance to talk with two other Western residents, Wayne Granquist and Lindsay Hardy, who described what the past couple of days have been like. Weston is is right on the banks of the West River, and uh, the village is literally a few feet above the the, uh, the the river at most times. So when the river overflowed, uh, it it really crest it did it began to crest on Monday morning, at about four o'clock in the morning, and uh, alarm buzzers went off in people's uh, houses who lived next to the river. And so at about four o'clock in the morning, uh, we had 11 people from the theater company uh, living in the playhouse and in the house we own next door, which is right next to the river. So uh, there was a scramble to get them out and they were moved up to the uh, other theater that we have, the, the theater at Walker Farm. And uh, it, it was, it, astounding the pressure that they did the 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 incredible force of that of that river in overflowing it it didn't take out the bridge in the center of town which is still it looks like it's intact but the road leading up to it is buckled and uh it's like it's like i i can't even describe it it's just it's it's uh, asphalt in waves 
and underneath the uh, asphalt has been dug out and there's, there's no gravel, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a gabion wall that, uh, that separates the river from uh, the, the west side of the, uh, of the uh, river. That held, which is terrific. And that's that, uh, but behind that wall, it just dug out a huge trench. And then the uh, river came through the, uh, the green and through the center of town, washed out behind the post office, behind what we call the blue store, and behind the uh, little school, and flooded those places. The, 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 folk, the, the folks that own the, uh, the village store lost all their inventory, and uh, it will be closed down for some time. The Vermont Country Store is a little bit higher on the ground, and that uh, that did not get impacted seriously. It got a little water here and there, but nothing, nothing tremendously serious. Fire department is in the flood zone and uh, got flooded to five feet, uh, wiped out their uh, uh, computer equipment and uh, anything electronic. And so that uh, but the machine, the the the, uh, the fire engines uh, and equipment were taken out before the flood upon expectation that it might uh, it might be flooded. So we still have the uh, the, uh, the the trucks. Uh, and and that that equipment that was portable. Yeah, I mean, I'll say Sunday evening, I went to the grocery store in Londonderry thinking that I just needed to get some extra supplies, not totally anticipating the the scale of uh, the flooding and the emergency as it would unfold. Um, and then went to bed Sunday night. I woke up probably around. 3.30 in the morning, I could hear the river outside. Um, my house is right on Main Street and the West River is right in my backyard. So I could hear it, um, but it didn't sound totally scary at that point. And I woke up right around five o'clock and I could see the fire department was out on Main Street in front of my house. Um, and shortly thereafter, one of the guys came up, knocked on my door to let me know that they were evacuating houses. At that time, around five o'clock, it was because the, there was a loose uh, propane tank and you could smell the propane as soon as I opened the door. It was very strong um, and the fire department folks were not able to secure it. So they were just trying to get everybody in the area out. Um, and at that point, so that was just a little bit after five, <clears throat> Route 100 north to the north was already closed. So they were trying to send me to the south towards Londonderry. Um, by the time I grabbed my dog and a couple of things to leave the house, um, thinking that I would probably just make it over to Springfield where my mother lives, um, the road to the south was already washed over. Um, and at that point, I was told to go up to the Colonial House Inn, which is up on top of the hill on Route 100. and went up there, sat in the parking lot for a little while, trying to learn what was happening. I did make a trip back down, um, thinking that perhaps the, the propane had sort of dissipated and we might be able to get back to our house. And at that point, um, there was, uh, the fire department was back out on Main Street and they were just trying to get everybody out because the water was rising, was already um, almost up to the green. Um, so grabbed a few more things from my house, went back up to the colonial house and uh, very grateful that Kim and Jeff Seymour, the owners of the colonial house were there taking people in. Um, I was there overnight with a couple of other residents and a lot of the staff at the Weston Playhouse. And um, they took very good care of us, made us a big pasta dinner on Monday night and breakfast in the morning. and. There were other folks in town doing like sort of like a local DoorDash where if they could get out on the roads and bring food up from their pantries to the end, they did that. Um, so I feel like I was very lucky in that I had a safe, comfortable place to to ride out the storm. And I had a room with my dog and just watched the rain for the rest of the afternoon. Meanwhile, a short distance down Route 100 in Londonderry, a similar scene was unfolding at Jelly's Deli along Main Street, where residents had gathered to clean up the badly flooded shop. Susan Brown, the daughter of store owner Bev Jelly, 
told us what it was like as the floodwaters entered the store and what they were doing now. Yeah, we uh, came up uh, about 3 o'clock Monday morning. Um, the river was still about a foot or so below uh, the parking lot out here. And uh, so my mother and my daughter came and we started just putting stuff up high, hoping for the best, hoping that it didn't flood the entire store. Um, we were here for about an hour. It came up so fast, it, it was coming in the door. So uh, we barely all made it out of here. And mm. uh, we came here Tuesday morning and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty bad. It's, you know, almost pretty much a total loss of everything. How many, how, many, how many feet of water were on the floor uh, here? At the well, you can see by the look, uh, you want to take that cash register over there. Uh, the, there's a line above the uh, light switches over there. Uh, so okay. It was about, uh, yeah, I mean, over here. Um, so it well, looks like a bunch of your neighbors are here uh, helping clean yeah, up. Yeah, we've had... Uh, our employees here, family, the community's been great. Um, I mean, the folks from the butcher shop have come down. They fed us lunch yesterday. Everybody's, everybody's been wonderful. We've had a lot of support, so it's been so great. You have a date when you will be able to reopen, or uh, that's what well, will be determined? I mean, uh, this is probably a little worse than it was with Irene, uh, and I think there was a, a little over two months that we were closed for that. So, with any luck, within a few months, we can be back open. I mean, we've had a Jamaica Cottage Shop just came in and offered to help make uh, new countertops for, new counters for us. Um, I mean, Todd Williams, the can man, dropped off a dumpster for us yesterday morning, first thing. Uh, it's, it's been great, you know. We've got port body from doors in Manchester, so, yeah. Inside and outside the store, merchandise is being sorted, inventoried, and tossed into a dumpster. One of those helping out was State Representative Laura Sebillian, who's also the Director of Regional Economic Development Strategies and Programs for the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. Yep. What's uh, going to be the role of the state government in helping folks like the lady who runs the store here to get back open and... Is there any kind so of... So uh, SBA will come through um, with, uh, for businesses um, with lending. Um, you know, there may be FEMA. Uh, I don't think they're... I, Too early to tell. Yeah, I mean, FEMA's typically not especially helpful for structures here. More like infrastructure and roads um, and buyouts. Uh, so SBA, uh, philanthropy, uh, insurance, debt, those are the things that are more typical, I think, for private businesses. Also helping out was Adam Grinold, the executive director of the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, first you, you start in one corner and you start picking up the mess uh, one corner at a time. turns into one building at a time, so you know, we just stopped in here today and started helping schlep stuff out and muck it out. Um, so I think that's first. Everybody's got to clean up first. Then they've got to do some gut to the building, um, get that work done. Uh, and then uh, as that work's done and everything is safe and clean, then be able to establish a plan to move forward, when to reopen. Um, you know, unfortunately, federal dollars for businesses take a long time to, to come into communities after a flood. Uh, in Irene, there was community development block grant, disaster recovery. Uh, but those funds were being distributed still two to two and a half years after Irene. Um, so it's a, it's a long haul. Uh, folks, if they don't have flood insurance, there's not a lot of direct support for businesses. Um, and, you know, the punch of, of COVID uh, and then this for a community and then specifically a community like Londonderry that had Irene, then COVID, and then this. It's, it's unimaginable. It's a, a steep hurdle, but everybody here is digging in and getting the work done. One thing is clear, it won't be back to business as usual anytime soon. Many other shops and businesses sustained considerable water damage and lost inventory and equipment. Some may have flood insurance, others not. How many will be able to surmount the hurdles and obstacles to reopening remains to be seen, along with whatever federal assistance may be forthcoming. But that too will take time. 
For the GNOW TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.